Welcome back to another edition of Man Cave Astronomy. Um, as you can see, we've got the um, declination of plastic cover back on our, our LXD 75 on the, the last video. I took the, um, you know, I described to you kind of what had happened and uh, basically took the mount out, um, went, went to do the, uh, the drivetrain setup on the motors. And uh, ended up going into the wrong sub menu on the LXD 5575 adjust setting, and the mount slewed 180 degrees um, in right extension over, and ended up hitting the drive housing um, for the declination on the, the right extension housing, and ended up cracking the um, broke the broke the screws out of the the holding ports on the, the plastic housing for the declination drive cover. So I ended up going to the hardware store today, picking up some some things to fix it. And uh, I have here, there we go. Uh, what I ended up getting was a three quarter inch long, number four by 40 stainless steel screw. I bought a five pack of them for about $2. And I also bought because they were a little bit longer. Because um, I ended up uh, the the screws, the original screws, were countersunk in the housing underneath here, and it broke the plastic out of there. But it didn't break the the, the countersink housing that kind of forms around it. Um, it cracked a couple of them, but they were they were steady enough that, that they weren't completely broke apart. So um, I picked the screws up, and I also found these little screw head covers and the little black plastic buttons here you can see and the reason I got those was not because I didn't want the, the, the screws hanging out there and, and visible it was more or less a space filler um, so it took up some of the length on the screw it made it just right I had about a quarter inch or so of screw sticking out of the bottom that needed to screw into the motor housing um, so that's why I got those. Those were about a, a buck twenty for a pack of two. So there's about five bucks total. Um, and you can see the housing's nice and you know it's secured again. Um, it's not flopping around and um, and hanging there. And, and like I said, literally I just I just tighten the screws down on the outer side of the the housing here. The other part of the you know those little buttons give a nice good diameter on the the outer part of the housing. Um, to, to give the screw something to pull against and, and tighten up the, the dry box. So um, we got that fixed, thank God, for five bucks. Um, and, you know, hopefully, um, you know, you guys that have damaged or, or done the same thing that I did, hopefully you guys won't have that problem. But, um, you know, that's a, a good quick fix. I was really worried about that, getting that, that taken care of because I didn't want the... Um, I didn't want the motor sitting out exposed and me trying to use the telescope and bumping the um, the degree wheel and different stuff that's in there. So we got we got it all nice back and covered up good and worked out really well. So um, the other thing that I wanted to, to share with you guys, I did some a few hours of internet research and I finally found an explanation on what the LXD 55 and 75 adjust setting is in your hand box. And basically what it's for is it aligns your scope to your polar scope. It's a, it, it, I say polar scope, but it aligns your scope to right extension. Um, and I read the whole kind of little setup menu and it's, it's one of three methods that, that were described. Um, I didn't read all three. I just read the, the one that it made me end up breaking my telescope. And then what I did get out of it is I don't feel like it's a really a very important um, feature that we really need to go through. Um, there was the two other methods were a lot simpler. Um, one of them was using, you know, you take your polar finder and you, you pick an object with your polar finder and your scope. If your right extension is in line, um, your scope should should be on that target that you're looking at with your with your polar finder. So basically, all it does is it it levels the the scope to uh, your right extension. Um, so that's what it's for. Um, I found that on I googled it and I found it. There's an explanation 
on out of some manual or, or somebody had wrote it on Google and ended up finding it that way. So, um, but that's basically essentially what that what that sub menu's for. Um, I think if you go through it and do the coning, um, which we'll we'll get into eventually. Um, I know this is kind of a snail's pace of doing things here, but um, it is a hobby. It's not an everyday adventure. Um, you know, we eventually will do coning and, and acclimation and, and all that good stuff on, on this scope once we once we get this thing uh, dialed in a little bit more, which we, we're pretty close. Um, I got to buy an acclimator to start with, but... Uh, but that's that's essentially what it was. That's that's what we ended up the sub menu we ended up getting into, and uh, we ended up uh, damaging our my my LXD seventy five mount. So um, the one thing that it didn't um, say on there, which I think me could have put it on the scroll menu whenever you select that function uh, for that LXD fifty five seventy five adjust, was um, you need to do your your train drive setup before you do the LXD 55 and 75 train or adjust, uh, when you select that function, you need to already have your, your drives trained and you need to go through that function. Well, if I look at it like this, if that's the case, then they should have put that sub option, that menu, below the train menu um, just because just it's natural human logic that you do the first things that you come to and you work your way down, it's a step process, you know. On um, the LXD 75 uh, adjust setting um, that made me end up breaking my, my deck line, and I'm not blaming me for that, that was my own fault, but um, that menu should have been down below the, the train drive setup to, to cure any confusion, I, I feel like, but, um, but anyway, that's just kind of my opinion. Um, I, I know everybody out there's got one. I've got some good comments that I have not read yet. I, I'm getting ready to, to go on there and go read the comments that I got. Um, but uh, but I did want to share how I fixed that dry box. Maybe um, you guys that have got one that's, that's cracked or damaged a little bit, maybe maybe that'll work out for you. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching.